Hello and welcome to Dear Kev on Stage, where I take your questions and give you the best, worst advice on the planet. As always, you can submit questions to DearKev at KevOnStage.com. You'll remain anonymous to protect the innocent. This is also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever podcasts are found, on Facebook and YouTube if you like the video. Let's get into the first question. Hey, Kev. I've been dating this guy for three years. You would think that we've gotten to the point where we're totally open. He always tells me how he loves my natural hair and I should wear it more. How about you do my natural hair? <laughs> Unamused emoji. Because as for me and my forehead, we will wear wigs. <laughs> anyway, fast forward. We're on the couch watching TV. He falls asleep. Something said to me, playing his hair, sis. Had to be the Holy Ghost. I'm sure the Holy Ghost speaks just like that. So I did and his scalp lifted a little. I was shocked. Tell me why this man has a lace front all these years. So I stuck it back down. My question is, how do I ask who did his hair and tell him <laughs> to wear his natural hair too? <laughs> Thank you for submitting your question. First of all, I want to know if the Holy Ghost says sis. If the Holy Ghost told you playing his hair, sis, it was probably just you. Second of all, how do you tell him to wear his natural hair? Simple. When he sleep, you Delilah him. Put some coconut oil under there, some jojoba oil, maybe some African pride, essential oils, and loosen that thing up, okay? Have it flip back like a 2 chain song, pull up to the scene with my silly missing, okay? Glue it back down, back, okay? When he wakes up, just be sitting here like this. Bruh. And then let him answer you, okay? I'm all for men wearing lace front wigs. I'm actually in the process of researching them. I would have one right now if they weren't so expensive. Trust me, they get up there. I think he has to pay for his hypocrisy in embarrassment. Loosen up his wig and, and get some Sharpie, uh, make sure he's really tired, put some Sharpie markers on it and point arrows to where his um, closure should be and let him explain to you why he don't love his natural hair. How dare you? I'm tell you, man, we be projecting as people. He's unsure about his natural hair. He doesn't know what he wants to do with it. So instead of just saying, hey, babe, I'm bald. Look at me. I'm bald. You think I don't want the cool hair? You think I don't want those twists and stuff that the young kids have? You don't think I want Odell Beckham's things? Of course. I do, but the Lord said, nay, he took it from me. And I said, why, Lord? He said, I'm going to take this from you, but I'm going to give you a beard. In my time of need, the Lord gave me a beard. And even that doesn't connect all the way. You think I don't want to put a couple little patches of Elmer's glue and some 4C hair on here? You think I never thought about it? I have. I thought about it plenty. But then I won't be able to go swimming and be happy. So do what I say. Unloosen his wig glue it backwards, put some pictures on him, and wake up and record it and send me the video. Okay, next question. I'm seeing when I'm on that Yvonne orgy the weight tip. Question number one, when is the perfect time to bring this up to men who show interest in me without looking and sounding like a crazy person? Question two, since I'm not sexually active, is it necessary for me to go get a, a pap smear? I've seen the metal thing they use for examination and that is now how I want my first time to go down. Okay. Question number one, when do you bring up that you're sexually celibate? First time you speak to the man in person. When you're sitting at the restaurant and like, hey, want some appetizers? And he says, hey, you want anything? Not sex. That's what I don't want. You ain't gonna be putting no mozzarella sticks up in this marinara sauce. And you freaking, <laughs> you can forget that. This marinara sauce is for the Lord. And it's going to stay for the Lord. Unless you want to put a ring on that mozzarella stick. And then you can put it all up in this marinara sauce. But until then, this marinara sauce is reserved for the Lord. Oh, you want some boneless wings? You better get boneless because you ain't going to get no bone in wings and dip them in this ranch. And I can tell you another thing. I ain't going to be dipping no celery in this ranch and having me bite it off. My analogies are going all over the place. But you get the point. You tell a man early and often. As soon as you swipe him right on Twinder, Twinder, mmm, tenders, chicken tenders, mmm, 
I like those. As soon as you swipe him right on Tinder and you say match, you jump in first. Ain't going to be no sex. You can forget that. This cat don't meow for no one. This cat is mute. You want to pet this cat, it's going to go. It can't open its mouth for no one. And also, not to tempt yourself, do not shave. Let it get like the Amazon pre-fire. So, man, you just be like, man, I'm tripping out here. And then condition it and braid it down. So even if you, <laughs> even if you, <laughs> even if you get tempted, he going to look down there and see some braids and some dreadlocks. He's going to be like, yo, you locked up down there? That's right. In more ways than one. And you ain't going to get no Jamaican beef patty to stick in my patois. <laughs> so after your question, you tell them early. And you don't give them a chance to think you're anything other than a woman or guy. Question number two. Um, you absolutely should get an annual pap smear. Um, when they do their pap smear stuff, I think it's called forceps. Um, I don't know. I've never had one. But that doesn't count as sex. Uh, whether or not you're sexually active, you should still get checked out regularly. At least once you should have an annual exam uh, just to make sure everything's in good working order. You don't have any um, cyst or, or fibrosis or anything else like that. You want to make sure you don't have the um, immaculate conception. You don't know what the Lord has planned for your life. Maybe you have another baby Jesus on the way. You don't know what God has planned for you. So check with your doctor, your OBGYN colleagist. Uh, check with them yearly at minimum. Whether or not you're sexually active, just want to make sure you're all good down in the hoo-ha, kuda cattle. <laughs> Once again, if you want to send questions, send them to DearKev at KevOnStage.com. You'll remain anonymous. Dear Kev, there's this girl that I'm really interested in and I want to tell her, but the only problem is that she has a boyfriend of three years. About a year ago, we became coworkers and rekindled a friendship that we created when we were younger and that resulted in my feelings for her to grow. I'm no longer working with her, so I've been able to stay quiet about how I feel. It's become a little easier, but I still feel strongly for her. What should I do? Don't let a relationship stand in the way of you and your wife. You've got to have patience. You just got to wait that thing out. Three years in, they're not married yet. There's still hope. What you want to do is get you a little relationship, hold that over for y'all for a little bit, make her jealous. Women tend to want to be more interested when a guy is taken than single. Be like, hey, this could be you. And then when she slides in your DMs, like, oh, congratulations. Who's your new girlfriend? It could be you. I'm really just waiting for you. Wait that relationship out. Do you think Alicia Keys stopped? Finding her husband just because Swiss Beats was already married? <laughs> Some people want it all, but she didn't have nothing at all without that woman's husband. She waited for Swiss Beats and their marriage to fizzle out, and then she jumped on in. Some would argue that she caused it. I think I'm falling in love with a married man. Don't let a little relationship come between you and your bride to be. Especially not a little boyfriend. He ain't even put a ring on it. He ain't serious. You let her know that you are game. You are ready. You are willing. You are able. And then you wait. Just like a lion waiting in Pride Rock for her prey or his prey. I don't know who does the hunt hunting. I think it's the women. Uh, Nala and Sarabi was out on the hunting stuff. So you're, you're Nala in this situation. You wait around for the right moment and then you pounce. You say, hey girl, I love you. I'm your Alicia Keys. And then you learn how to play the piano and then you lure her into your arms. Okay? That, that's what you do. And listen to Kev. My wife was in a relationship when we were in high school with this dude and they were together, what, six weeks? And I just looked at them from the other side of the lunchroom like this. Ooh, you think you're gonna love her? And I waited until he made a mistake. And one day he had a Bible 
he had went to Bible study with her, and there was a, a teen Bible study. You know how they have like the the like shiny pages with like hot topics for teens: drugs, sex, alcohol, lying. So he turned to the one that had sex, and he pointed at it, and then he pointed at Melissa, like, "Oh, me and you, me and you." And she was like, and she told me the next day at school, and I was like, "They ain't gonna make it till Thursday." And they were broke up by Tuesday, and that's when I jumped in. All right, wait out that relationship, man. Patience is a virtue that I desire. And waiting is a skill. You know what else is a skill? Lots of things. And Dear Kevin on Stage is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. You can take classes in everything from photography and creative writing to design, productivity, and more. So whether you're returning to a longtime passion project, challenging yourself to get outside your comfort zone, or simply exploring something new, Skillshare has the classes for you. I personally was interested in creative writing, and Roxanne Gay, award-winning author and writer extraordinaire, has a Skillshare on there. And the best part is, these a lot of these lessons are not even crazy long. They're five to seven minutes long, so you don't have to take all day to learn a new skill. And you can learn all type of stuff, so I learned a uh, how to write from a writer that I admire, who has amazing skills and who has much more success in the area that I don't have. I'm um, getting ready to learn some Photoshop stuff because I wanna learn how to do some light design so I don't have to pay other people to do stuff that I can do for myself, okay? So you should join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for my listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right, Skillshare is offering Dear Kev on Stage listeners two months of unlimited access to the thousands of classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash dear. Dear? Again, go to Skillshare.com slash dear. Dear to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash dear. Dear? All right, once again, if you want to submit a question, do so. Dear Kev at KevOnStage.com. Everybody remains anonymous. Dear Kev, there's this girl that I'm interested in. And I want to tell her, but the only problem is that she has a boyfriend of three years. This is a question I just read. Dear Kev, I own two successful realty companies and I'm considered the family success story. My favorite cousin and best friend growing up is the black sheep. He's recently se celebrated six months clean as now my family has pressured me to let him work for me. I don't want to sound pessimistic, but it's only been six months. Realtors only require a license and it only takes a couple months to get it. And it's a good paying job, but I don't want to ruin my credibility by adding an ex-drug act... <laughs> But I don't want him to ruin my credibility by adding an ex-drug addict felon onto my payroll. Thanksgiving is around the corner and I'm not looking forward to hearing how I think I'm better than everyone else because I won't hire him. Any advice will be appreciated. Also, he's missing some very visible teeth. I, <laughs> I doubt clients will appreciate that. <laughs> Listen. Don't hire him. And not for the reasons that you think. You don't want to hire this person. Whether they were your cousin or not, you don't want to hire them. The fact that you listed out, listen, why would I ask an ex-drug addict, felon, and dental hygiene meter to my team? No. Here's the thing. Family can be very pressuring for a lot of different reasons. Your family only wants you to hire him so that they don't have to give him money if he doesn't get a job, okay? Ask yourself this, would you hire that person if they weren't your cousin? Is this person the right person for the job? Will this person work for you like this was a job that you weren't family? These are the type of things that are important. I have a business, but I don't hire all my family members because you know they're not right for the job. I don't hire my grandma as a tour manager because she used to whoop me when I was a kid. And I don't wanna run the risk of her having a flashback and being like, who you think you're talking to? You don't talk to me that way? Like, but you're my employee. I'm, I only answer to Jesus. And then I got a whole thing. I also have another rule. You should never hire anybody that you have a hard time firing. If you can't let that person go, if they don't hold up, then you can't hire them. Uh, go Thanksgiving somewhere else. Go to a friend's Thanksgiving. Go to Boston Market. Eat Chinese food. Postmates, because sometimes when you got family and they be tripping, they just ruin the holiday anyway. But you don't want to hire this person, man. You don't. But here's my thing. You gonna give them a little money to get started? You don't even really believe in the sobriety. 
You're like, oh, I'm gonna, it's only been six months. Your ex drug addict fell in and missing teeth. Are you sure y'all related? How? Well, show me the family tree. Because I ain't feeling like uh, the relation is that strong. I feel like that's your cousin on your mama's side twice removed. So, no, man. Build your little business. Um, be prepared to not be the family success story because that's done. you going to be the black sheep now. The person who came out of rehab in six months sober, that's the person who everybody loves. Now you're just Scrooge. Dear Kev, I won't go into a whole story, but my question is simple. How do you date someone who has an obnoxious, annoying, fresh, rude, disrespectful, moody, weird, and every other adjective you can use to describe a five-year-old child that is not well-behaved around adults? <laughs> I'm in love with her mother, but I'm frequently find myself getting frustrated at both the child for not knowing how to respect adults and the mother for not disciplining the child for the disrespect towards me at times and the disrespect towards the mother at times. I understand that the child and the mother come as a package deal, but I'm not sure this is a package I want to engage in. There are times I want to tell the mother, maybe we should try this thing later when the child is older. <laughs> or perhaps we should walk away from this all. But we're in too deep. As a single fatherless male, how do I handle this situation where everyone is happy? Okay, here's the thing. Let this woman and her baby go. You list it off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven negative objectives. I mean, adjectives. adjectives. <laughs> you listed off seven negative adjectives about this baby and nothing positive. You don't you're not ready to be this baby's papa. If you can't be serious about this little child, you got to let him go. And I get it. It's a big ask. And, and if you're not the father of the baby, you reserve the right to be like, hey, I can't do it. I'd rather you be like, man, this isn't gonna work. Well, why? Because I hate your kid. I just hate that kid. Then to be like, let me just break up with you now and then I'm gonna come back when she's like 12, 11, 12. You let me come back when she's about 11, 12 because you know, I can't, I, can't do the, I can't do the current version of this kid. My dad took on three kids my brother, myself, and I, I didn't even have front teeth. Believe it or not, I didn't get these front teeth until I was like nine. I never had them as a kid. I was snaggle tooth forever. So uh, my brother was a terrible child. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have blamed my dad if he was like, man, this is the oldest one got to go. But he took us on all and he changed the trajectory of our lives. If you can't approach this baby like that, then it's better to let that baby go and destroy the world. Let that baby watch Problem Child, which is one of my favorite movies, and, and especially Problem Child 2. That's when they had the little bad girl in there. And you look at that movie and you say, listen, kid, you're that little bad white girl, whether she's black or white or Asian or Hispanic descent or Latinx or Native American or Indian. That's the difference between Native American and Indian. Indians are people from India. Native Americans are people who are indigenous to these United States. Whatever the race of that baby is, you say, look at this little white girl, that's you. And if you want a daddy, you better get your act together. Eh, maybe you shouldn't say that to a kid who's five. On second thought, I retract my given advice and I say, tell the mom I can't do this. I can't love you the way you need to be loved. I don't have the patience to raise your child. Or send the kid to boarding school. Say, babe, I feel like this kid needs to go to boarding school and they'll be better off that way. And when they come back, I'll see. I'll do a reassessment of our relationship. But don't make no long-term plans with this baby because it's, it's unfair to that little baby that you don't like them. It ain't their fault they're a terrible child. They don't even know. They're just a baby, man. They're just a baby. Dear Kev, I dated a married man from my church for eight years. We did everything together without being caught. I would even go on his work trips with him when he left out of town. He would stay the night at my house and tell his wife that he had overnight trips. We would get, we would go a couple years. Well, we, oh, I'm sorry. Well, we got caught a couple of years ago and would still have sex from time to time. Although we only talk every couple of months. Every time he calls, I go running. I feel so dumb because I'm still in love with this married man. Please help with some advice as to what I should do. Thanks. You are dumb. You're dumb. 
you letting this married man have his cake and eat it too which is a phrase that i never truly understood what does it mean does it mean i can have the cake and then like hold it but if i eat the cake then i don't have it but don't you only have cakes to eat cakes he's eating your cake and it ain't no cake he should be eating he should be eating his wife's cake and he's having his cake and eating it too that's what it is. He's having his cake as a wife and he's eating your cake and now he's got too much cake and he has high, high blood sugar and diabetes. You're helping this. Let me tell you what. Men will accept whatever they can get away with. And if you're allowing him to get away with this, then he's going to do it. He's not going to leave his wife. And you're not going to be able to have a healthy relationship with another man's because you're allowing this man's to be what this man's is. You're dumb. You knew it. I knew it. We all knew it. You're a dumb, dumb lollipop. Stop it. Cold turkey. No more sex with that married man. Okay. Eight years. Eight years? Every time he calls, I go running. Listen, you got to let that go. Listen, my wife said this yesterday and it was so good. Sometimes people break up and they have the unfinished business of loving someone. You're going to have to break up with that man and have the unfinished business of loving him while that love dissipates. You understand me? Let him go so you can be free. And you'll sleep a lot better when you don't have that 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 heavy weight of of this terrible relationship on your heart. And if you have trouble sleeping still, then what you really need is a purple mattress. Sleep's important. We spend a lot of time on our mattress, whether you're with a married man or you're alone. So if you're struggling to get a good night's sleep, you got to try a purple mattress. My wife and I have one and we sleep great. It also helps that we're not cheating on each other. But even if we were. The mattress is great. The purple mattress will probably feel different than a lot of things you've ever experienced because it uses this brand new material that was developed by an actual rocket scientist. It's not like the memory foam I'm used to. The purple material feels very unique because it's both firm and soft at the same time. So it keeps everything supported while feeling really comfortable. Plus it's breathable. So it still sleeps cool, which is very important to me. I live in the Valley in uh, Los Angeles very hot in the valley the way my house is set up stupidly the ac doesn't blow that great in the master bedroom it's not even really the master bedroom it's just another bedroom in the house if it weren't for this purple mattress i would be super hot but my mattress sleeps cool so my body's cool it ends up giving you the zero gravity feel i like so it works for any sleeping position Purple has a 100-night risk-free trial, so if you're not fully satisfied, you can return your mattress for a full refund. It's also backed by a 10-year warranty, and Purple has free shipping and returns. You're going to love Purple, and right now, my listeners will get a free Purple pillow with the purchase of a mattress, in addition to the great gifts they're offering site-wide. So just text DEAR to 84888. The only way to get this free pillow is to text DEAR, D-E-A-R, to 84888. That's D-E-A-R to 84888. Message and data rates apply. Dear Kev, my dad caught me having sex with my boyfriend. He was naked and it was very awkward. How can I tell my boyfriend I want him to do? <laughs> How can I tell my boyfriend I want him to divorce his wife? Also, my dad hates me now and I don't know how to approach him because he's a very angry man. As a father, what would you advise? <laughs> Whew. Didn't see the wife part coming. Uh, <laughs> let me just pause. Women be trash too. A lot of these deer calves come from women. And a lot of them are getting their marinara sauce dipped with a mozzarella stick that is not their own. Married mozzarella sticks belong in married marinara sauce. First things first. Why is a married man naked in your bed and your dad is at this place? You live at home and you're performing the illicit sex at home in your father's bed? You got to move out to cheat. 
I mean, we ain't in high school anymore. If you're going to perform illicit sins and fornicationes, that's fornication in Spanish, probably incorrectly translated. But if you're going to perform illicit sex, you don't want to do it in your dad's house. Now he hates this man for having sex with you in your bedroom. And then he's going to hate this man even more when he finds out he's married. I don't think you should tell him to divorce his wife. I think you should not be sleeping with the married man. And the man's trash as well. We be trash. I get it. I understand. But at least if you're going to be trash, you got to have your own place. There's, there's, he, he can't be trash with you at his place because his wife could bust in. So he's trash with you at your place and your dad busts in. The Lord is trying to tell you something. God's trying to tell you something. You're focused on the wrong things. Say, Dad, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have disrespected your home that way and sexed in your room with a married man. I don't think your dad hates you, but also don't know this man, so maybe he does. I don't want to speak for that guy. Maybe he's like, I hate you, Charlotte. The name's not Charlotte, guys. All the names are, are um, protected from the innocent. Let's just take that out. I don't think your dad hates you, but also I don't know your father. He's probably upset just to see you in that way. As parents, a lot of times, dads, we have this uh, unfortunate double standard where we're proud of our kids that are male for performing the sex. And then we're ashamed of our daughters for performing the sex or having the sex performed on them. That is a patriarchal uh, society error. And I actually can admit that I had to come to grips with, I had that same thought. If that was my son, oh, go ahead, son. That's my daughter. Oh, don't do that to my baby. Well, I guess I don't want to pop my fist. I'll be like, go ahead, son. Baby, what are you doing? And you're going to either be happy or sad, regardless of sex. Because what we end up doing is shaming our, our daughters and praising our sons for the same act. It ain't right and it ain't fair. I don't want my kids having unprotected sex until they're um, in a committed relationship and hopefully in a marriage. And I ain't going to praise them if they're having a girl naked in my house. I ain't going to praise them. You hear me? Zay and Joe, you hear me? You think I'm going to go in there and, and give you a high five? I ain't. First things first, let that married man go back to his wife. Let these married men go back to their wifes. Don't be in there doing the sex with them. Second thing, second, apologize to your dad and ask him why he's upset. Dad, are you upset with me because I'm a woman expressing my free right to have sex? Are you upset with me because you're patriarchal and hypocritical? Are you upset with me because the guy was naked? Make sure you at least let your dad be mad at you for the right thing. You don't know what he could be. He could be upset. He might not have known you were flexible. Just just get the right upsetness so you guys can have a great talk. Last question. Dear Kev, my son's father has been absent for seven years after I helped him get a new job. He also got married to the woman he's insisted be my son's godmother. Now he's complaining to me and asking if I would take him back if he were to get divorced. What should I do? Should I continue life as usual and forget he existed or consider it for my son's sake? Because I've been making it as a single parent for seven years now. This man is looking for a get out of hell free card. He's he wants to test the waters of a potential relationship with you. And he's using your baby as bait. If you guys have had a healthy coexisting co-parenting co-educational coagulate relationship that coincides with the coefficients then I co-sign you continue to be single. Don't let this man pull on the heartstrings of motherhood and use that as a relationship. If he's serious with you, then let him get divorced first without no strings attached. Don't give him no parachute so he can test it out with you, see if he likes that. Let me just see what it tastes like. Don't let him see what it tastes like. Huh? And don't save him a piece of that corn for later. I hope you get those references from a great movie. But don't let him see what it tastes like. He don't get to taste victory. He's tired of losing. He want to win. It's not fair. It's not fair to you. Because then if he drops you off like an old can at a recycle factory, 
and then messes you up again. Now you got to start all over with the baby. You got to start all over with yourself and then you got to start coexisting all over again. Sex complicates everything. Cause now you start having sex with him and you're like, man, it, uh, it either cover ups your flaws or it heightens the, the good parts of people. And that's why you got to be clear and sure when you're having the sex, because sex is the greatest cloud cover in the world. You understand me? Tell that man, no, whatever you guys' current relationship is, let it be that. And that's all it needs to be. He don't deserve you unless he's sure about you. Don't extend no lifeline, no tag. Thank you for tuning in for today's episode. As always, we're here every Friday, Joshua. Mm -hmm. Every Friday on KevOnStageStudios.com on YouTube, Kev on Stage on Facebook, and wherever you find your podcasts. Most of you guys are on Apple, but Spotify as well, and Stitcher, and Podbean. A lot of people watch this po- or listen to this podcast at work. I say you do it. Who cares about that stupid job? Put your headphones in and listen to me. See you next week. Submit your questions to DearKev at KevOnStage.com. I love you. Bye.